Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the College Investor Video. I am really excited to share with you today the qualified and not qualified expenses that you can take with your 529 plan. Now this is really important because 529 plans are great tools to save for college. But if you take out money for non-qualified expenses, you could end up paying a 10% tax penalty on those distributions instead of it being tax free. So that could really hurt you. So let's dive in and we're going to talk about the four buckets of qualified expenses for the 529 college savings plans. And then I'm going to share with you some common expenses that don't qualify, but people get in trouble for. So number one, of course, the biggest thing that's qualified is your tuition and fees. So your college tuition and any fees charged by your school directly are definitely qualified 529 plan expenses. So your school sends you a bill. If it's on that bill, for the most part, it qualifies. Number two, room and board. So room and board is a qualified expense for a 529 plan with one caveat. The amount that you use for this cannot exceed either the amount that the school says it costs for room and board on their statements or the actual amount charged for you by the institution. So if you're living in the dorms in your freshman year, maybe your sophomore year, whatever they bill you, that qualifies. However, if you're living off campus, you can still actually deduct your rent and different things like that as a qualified expense. However, it cannot exceed the amount that the school says the allowance is for room and board on their fee schedule. So keep that in mind. Number three, textbooks and supplies. So textbooks for the class, if they're required, are definitely qualified plans, uh, plan expenses, and supplies for your classes are also qualified 529 plan expenses. So some examples of supplies that uh, I get asked a lot are, um, scantrons for taking tests. You could have lab uh, fees. You could have to buy uh, like a white coat for your lab. Um, you could have to buy uh, clickers. I had that in one of our classes where someone had to buy like a laser pointer clicker to like vote and show that their attendance was there for the class. So those are supplies that are required as part of a class and those qualify. It's important to note that the College Board estimates that students spend an average of $1,200 per year on textbooks and supplies. So this is a big expense for students. Um, so it's really important that you keep those receipts and you can justify that they are qualified 529 plan expenses. Number four, computers and equipment. So last year, the government said that laptops that you need to use or computers that you need to use for school are considered qualified. And that's a great win for students. So when you go to college, you can buy yourself a computer and that will qualify for school or qualify as a 529 plan qualified expense. Uh, equipment, when we talk about this, would also be like software. So if you buy your computer and you need Microsoft Word, uh, that software, because you're going to use that word primarily for school, would be a qualified expense. Now you can't go buy games, things like that. Those are not qualified expenses, but software that you're going to use for school is a qualified 529 plan expense. I'll give you a little tip here is go to your college bookstore and always look for the educational version of the software. Um, so Microsoft offers educational versions, Apple does an education discount, uh, let's see, everything, even like Photoshop, Adobe, all those things you can get an education price. It saves you so much money um, when you go and buy this. So it's a great way to save and it shows that you're going to be using this uh, equipment or software for your education purposes, and that's huge. Now, I wanna talk about a few expenses that don't qualify, and these are things that people get in trouble for too often because they think they should qualify, but they don't. So the number one thing that doesn't qualify is transportation and travel to and from school. So if your kid's going away to school, and you're gonna fly them there, you're gonna move them there, they're gonna fly them home for Thanksgiving. You know, those travel and transportation costs don't qualify as an education expense when it comes to your 529 plan. So if you use money for that, the IRS could come back to you and say, no, you need to pay taxes and a penalty on that amount. So don't do it for transportation and travel. Also, 529 plan money cannot be used for the repayment of student loan debt. 
So you might think, oh, well, my student loans were used for school and I have this 529, I can use that to pay for my student loans. No, I am sorry to tell you that you cannot use 529 money to repay your student loans. If you do, you'll incur that federal penalty and income taxes on your uh, withdrawals. Another one that comes up a lot is electronics like uh, iPads, phones, cell phones, the cell phone bill itself. You know, we almost feel like cell phones are a necessary like aspect of living these days. But the fact is that you can't use your 529 plan money to pay for your phone bill, your smartphone, uh, your tablet, things like that, um, because they are not used for education primarily. Like your cell phone is mostly used for yourself. You could take notes on it and that's cool, but you still can't write that off as a 529 qualified expense. The next one is sports club dues. Now this one might sound a little weird, but you have to realize that a lot of schools today offer like gym memberships and discounts and things like that for students. So if you get that from your school and you're paying for that, you're not allowed to write that off as a qualified education expense. It's not a qualified one. It's a great deal, so take advantage of it if you can get a great gym membership for 10 bucks a month, but you cannot use that money or you cannot use your 529 plan money to use to pay for that $10, $20 a month, whatever that sports club do is or fitness club or whatever that membership looks like. And finally, insurance payments. So a lot of students, when they go to school, they're going to be faced with their own medical insurance. Some people even buy medical insurance through their school. So a lot of schools have health offices where you can buy a plan that takes care of your student while they're at school. Well, those insurance payments are not qualified education expenses, even if you're buying it through the school. And it might even be billed on your same statement as your tuition. Um, so it's really important to realize that insurance payments to pay for healthcare and different things like that are not qualified education expenses, so you cannot use your 529 plan money for it. All right, guys, hopefully that provides you some clarity on what qualifies as a 529 plan expense and what doesn't. I would really like to thank ScholarShare for sponsoring this video and the blog post that's on the blog today. Uh, they are awesome when it comes to um, taking care of uh, 529 plans in the state of California. They do a great job. It's a great plan, consistently ranked among the best 529 plans in the nation. And hopefully you found value in this video today. So I'd like to thank you very much. Check out any more questions you have on the blog. You can go right into the description below this video, click the link, it will take you right to the blog post where you can get a full breakdown of the qualified 529 plan expenses that qualify, which ones don't. And if you find value in this video and you like what we're doing here at The College Investor, please subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Thanks guys, and I will see you next week.